bit of footy. Great uh, weekend's viewing. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the Western Bulldogs, as uh, we t- mm. spoke about before, Seven. And uh, for me, I want to focus on the selection contention that has taken place and where Caleb Daniel and Bailey Dale's positions on the weekend fit in. And Bevo had a crack at trying to explain it to us. Yeah, are we are we selecting for now? We're selecting to be better in the future, and that's largely what a coach's remit is: is to try and find the next best evolution of your team. That there's, I don't have answers, but I have questions. Mm. So in the end, Bramble's name wasn't mentioned, and and he's come into the club, and I think Bevo likes him, and he wants to give him a real crack at it. But for me, it's Bramble v Caleb Daniel, and at the moment. Brambles, he, he started this season okay, but and he's got getting plenty of the ball. He's doing the kickouts, probably not defending quite as well, and not giving them the the um, stability off the back that I think that Caleb Daniel has and would mm. do. And I don't know what sort of form Caleb Daniel's in either, so we don't have all the information. At twenty six in the VFL uh, reportedly looked okay. That game was prior to the main. Game, but you're right. We, we haven't seen a lot of him. He's been disrupted. Where does he play? Midfield? Is he sub? Is he back? So that's you know they they haven't done him any favors there either. And the other one is Bailey Dale's selection and uh, against, and he's probably Oscar Baker. So yeah. the the role that Oscar Baker's playing, Bailey Dale could play. He doesn't have to just play off the back. He could play off off a wing. But in the end, you're sort of saying, okay, well, we think if we if you decide you want to move past players that have played, you know, a couple of all Australian type players that have that have played significant roles for you in the past. If you say you're going to move past them, to move past them you need to have better. Or or they need to be or, or they or they're terribly out of form. Now, I don't know about the evidence of being terribly out of form, but they I don't and I don't think that they've found better. Uh, the, the the selection of O'Donnell as a third tour made sense, and you described that really well. And and I like Gallagher in the side. He's a young player that um, that looks like he's contributing now and will better will be better in the future. The question I've got is, I I wonder whether there is a little bit of list management consideration in all of this. Are these two, and maybe even Jack McRae, are they players that they feel like they want to move on from in in a five year sense, like so, are they players that they might trade at the end of the year? Feels to me he is at loggerheads with his list management group because Bailey Dale is a is a free agent a year ago, signs a five year deal in twenty twenty two, and now Luke Beveridge is not even starting him in the best twenty two. Caleb Daniel is on big money; he's got a couple of years left on the contract. Jack McRae is the same. Is Luke Beveridge saying to his list management, "I disagree with what you've done here, and I'm going to make"? A statement because to your point there isn't better than that it, we're talking baker we're talking o'donnell i mean we're we're talking brand O'Donnell, o'donnell's I, well, I put him separate Bramble, yeah, I, know, I, know, and baker I, know him, I know you put him separate but he played o'donnell way before he was ready last year and we saw that i i think he's trying to make a statement with list management going you guys made the wrong call and you can chuck rory lobb in there as well mm. and i'm going to make a statement that I disagree with the list management decisions that you've made. You see the club as top four. I see it as probably bottom six. This is Luke Beveridge. And Mm. there is a complete divide as to where they see the club. And the worst thing that you can have is the coach thinking one thing, list management thinking another, the board thinking we're top four. And then you get the mess that we saw on Friday night where Essendon kick 10 out of the last 11 goals. This is an Essendon side bucks who got smashed the week before against Port Adelaide, who are missing Wright, Perkins, Setterfield, you name yeah. it. The Western Bulldogs should not lose that game of footy. So let's be brutally honest here. Um, th- there is a significant issue with the coach, the club, the relationship there. And and this has been going on for a, a lot longer period of time. I'm not, I'm not an apologist. I'm not an apologist for Luke Beveridge, but I, but I am someone who understands the difficulties of, mm. or, or the, the, the different inputs and challenges of trying to coach in the moment and trying to find, because sometimes you won't, what, what you, the decision you need to make won't be optimal for now, but it will be optimal for a month's time or two months time or, a, or 12 months time. So how, how I don't, does playing I, Bramble I don't, over Bailey Dale set you up for two years time? I don't, I, I, don't I, don't, I don't see it either. Yeah, okay. So the, so, the, but the question, so, in terms of he's not in not in um, sync with his list management, 
there can be times when a five year with a player who has five years left on a contract isn't in the side because yep. he needs to know that the level that he's reaching or that the level he's at at the moment isn't satisfactory either against his own standards, what the coach wants him to be able to produce for himself or where, where he should be for that individual himself and to have some tough love there or for the team's expectation and, and needs for either now or in the future. Mm -hmm. So we don't have all that information, but it's hard to make sense of it from out here. And, and, only, and that'll only come out in the wash. But the selection on the weekend seemed to be the, the disconnect between what they needed to win and like the best 23 to be selected to win and the one that was actually mm. selected. All right, there's a lot of other issues to work through. So you want to speak about the Bombers? And and I say that that last point I made is that's easy in retrospect. I mean, but they, it's you're right. It's not a game that they should have given up and they were coming up against a wounded Essendon side who had their own injury concerns and that's my second point. I, I thought it, it was actually quite an easy coaching opportunity for Brad Scott because he didn't have all of the players at his disposal. Nothing to lose. So in the end, what he, he knew and, and the experience of last, last week with Butters, Rosie, or was Rosie and Horn Francis mm. in particular going nuts was, okay, well, we just need to take the opposition's key, key match winners out of the game. So what he was able to do was, was use – a young young players against the opposition's absolute champions and then let his more mature players, experienced players, go to work mm. in Merriton Parish. So it was Durham on Bontempelli. It was Caldwell on Liberatore. Two important roles for two young players that he rates and values. And oh, he would have been so impressed with what he saw. They, they learned a lot from the week before. Uh, I, I love Harrison Jones and, and his work rate in front of the ball. I actually had a question at quarter time of the Port Adelaide game. What is it? What can Harrison Jones? What is it that Harris, that the the King brothers do that Harrison Jones can't? Mm. And and I think if I'm a Bombers supporter, I'm looking at his effort. I'm looking at his attitude. He can take marks in a pack. He's got great pressure and work ethic at the ground at ground, which I don't reckon a lot of key forwards have. He looks to me like he's he's a tall, marking player who has been a small kid at some point and, mm. is, and knows how to play ground level and knows how to play as a flanker. Um, so I reckon he was great. So there are three young players there in Durham, Jones and Caldwell that, that played really well. Merritt, McGrath and Parrish stood up and, and played their roles as great uh, um, yeah, experienced Mackay players and leaders. And I thought Dersma, Mackay and Goldstein as three of their four recruits. Gresham was quiet. So everything went Essendon's way. We talk about the edge. They just had a crack, you know, and they had a crack for four quarters and they were able to blunt the the best elements of their opposition and and, and, and ended up exposing them. The fact that the Bulldogs play fast played into Essendon's hands. So it was a bit of a, a perfect storm for for Brad Scott, but they were able to get the job done. And now, so they go win, loss, win, loss, win. Adelaide, Adelaide Oval, game. Friday night. They're perfect for them to actually get some momentum. Hopefully one or two players back, you would think. And then um, Adelaide off a pretty good performance. So that, that'll be on as well. Speaking of Adelaide, that's point three. Yeah, great lead into point three. And this was an early season grand final. There's no doubt about it. And it was played by Adelaide. And there were decisions made in game, which reflected that that was a grand final. Like that was what? a game they had to win. Well, Jordan Butts... I'm almost positive that he that he's that he won't play the next three weeks. He had a hamstring strain just before half time. And he's played the second half with a hammy strain so you think on Harry Mackay. Rolled the dice. They've had to on a hammy. He he comes he well, I don't think I can't see him playing the next three weeks. I mean nothing's come out yet. Yeah. But I'd be I'd be amazed if he plays next week. I reckon he did his hammy into a contest late in the second quarter. But if he you take him out of that back line then Keane needs to go somewhere, probably has to go to Mackay. Worrell has to go to Kerno, And the, the, uh, the domino effect would have been, would have been uh, impossible to overcome for Adelaide. But Matty Nix would have been wrapped with that performance. They made selection decisions. They made decisions in game based on this was a must win. And they were able to come home hard in the uh, last quarter to do so. And I think Carlton was still really competitive and did well. Adelaide kicked 7-2 from the back half. 
They took 18 inside 50 marks. They've been averaging like 18th in the comp, averaging yep. six and a half. Um, Can I ask you? Yeah. We've all been calling for Rankin to spend more time on ball. And it's taken five weeks for that to happen. Why are coaches so stubborn? Is it almost like the external um, advice that they get, they want to push back on that? So five center bounce attendances for Rankin throughout the first four weeks. He goes in there 20 times and he's the best player on the ground. And everyone has seen that as such an obvious move to make, yet they have resisted doing that. Are coaches so stubborn that they want to push back on the advice they get externally? Are you, are yep. you serious? I am. Are what, you serious? What's the, what's the no, other no, 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 no. Are you suggesting that a coach won't do something that might be better for their team because someone else suggests yes. it externally? Oh, that, that's what I'm asking. Well, you. That, what, what, what other, that, is what other so ex- that is so egotistical. What other explanation have you got that we're going, this midfield is boring, slow, dour, lateral, sideways kicks, high handballs, no oomph, no zest, and you've got Isaac Rankin there who's the perfect one who can inject some of that and you're still putting him in there five times. And then all of a sudden you get to round five, season on the line, um, pressure coming and he goes in there 20 times and he's best. What other explanation have you got for that? Well, Dawson had to go out for Rankin mm. to go in. So did Laird. Oh, that's the ob- obvious no, move, well, isn't it? Laird, Laird actually played really well out of there and then playing a little bit more rolling back as a defensive mid and his use off halfback became really important for them. But no, the the coach, what you're dealing with is you go in with your best laid plans. You give your players every opportunity to either um, – perform themselves into the role that they've earned through preseason or out of it. Matty Nix has had to shuffle the deck chairs and he's had to move. His captain wasn't playing quite as good a footy as he was uh, last year and he's still playing good footy, but he's moved him forward out of the midfield so that to, to put Rankin in. That's not a small um, well, I'm, decision suge- to I'm make. suggesting that was a mistake then. That's that's an obvious move that he should have made three weeks ago. And hey, the fact that he didn't do that. You're sitting, in, you're sitting. And it's not hindsight. We'd all been saying it. No, you're sitting in A1 of the cheap seats no, because I'm, it's I'm, so easy out here because you don't have all the information. You, you're coming, like, so they've won a game of footy yeah. and then you're going back to two weeks ago about something they shouldn't have done. Which we all said at the time. Hey, Rankin's been playing slowly more five. midfield minutes. So he's gone but Rankin five, wasn't to the tw- only. five to 20. That's a, that's a big jump. And you're only talking about centre bounces. Yeah, well, 100%. Yeah, but centre bounces in the beal and, and, no, and end is, all of midfield got, time. Got him in there and the first kick of the game, he hits Fogarty, the, the lead up out wide. He hits uh, Rochelle, he hits Walker and... It was a complete shift. I yeah. thought that was no, it wasn't a, a complete easy shift. move. Saligo, Saligo was. Oh, he's been there for a few weeks and he's been good. Yes, and yeah. Saligo hadn't had a big preseason, which is why he was sub in round one, and now he's playing significant midfield time. Rochelle played his best game. Rankin played his best Walker game. Walker played his best their, game. Their backs actually got the ball moving off the line, and the chicken of the egg is it Taylor Walker up front or is it the ball use that leads to him? I told you, coaches were stubborn, and and Bucks is just highlighting that this morning. And what'd you make of the Saints? Yeah, well, Ross has got every reason to sort of to be a little bit perplexed. I mean, he's got a he's got a group that a young group that he's building towards something. But I was so impressed that the overwhelming thing I saw was I was impressed with their running power. Mm. You know, the Giants are as a stronger running team as any, and you do go through ebbs and flows this season. And and for me. The Giants might be just a little bit off, and it'll be interesting to ask Adam Kingsley later in the in the program about how he coaches through that when they're not playing their A game, but they're still winning it. But and that's what I'm that's what I'm witnessing. But the last quarter of the of the Saints showed the running power that they have uh, off the back. You know, Bonner and and uh, Wanganine Miller are off the back. Sinclair went forward a little bit mid forward. But Darcy Wilson off the wing, if you get a chance to watch the highlights, there's a there's a goal that he kicks out of the goal screen. He's done this two or three weeks in a row late in games. And he, he just put his wingman to the sword running yeah. open side and was able to get 10 or 15 metres um, goal side to, to finish that goal. I just Where are I, they at, though? Like, I, I, an I, overarching I, like, I like where they're at. You like where they're at? I like I, where they're at. I don't think at. they've got a lot going for them at all. I think they've got a – they've got – They've got issues in the midfield. Um, they've got – they lack depth there. So they, they do rely on, you know, Windhager's going to be important. Can he become, you know, 
can he become a, um, a an elite midfielder? I don't know whether that whether he whether they can, but they do have they do have some holes in the midfield. But I just I just I think Philippo has been going there. He's going to have ups and downs as he goes through. I think Owens is a is a is a player that not many sides in the in the. Um, I mean, so we, all, we always talk about now. they're the two we talk the three really with Winhager. I think I mean, Wilson's a player. Every side's got three or four. Wanganin Miller is a young, gun off the players. bat. Yeah, Hill's, I, Hill's played his Hill played his best game for a long time. Uh, I, I think Max King is a bit up and down. Like mm. he needs to be more consistent. But what, what's your knock on them? Well, just talent. There's pound for pound talent. I just don't see them um, within the top eight nine teams in the league with that. And I think they know that. And I think that what they've done from a coaching point of view is excellent. There's no criticism there. He's extracting the most that you possibly can with the group that he's got. But talent for talent, pound for pound, I think it's going to take some time to actually go to the draft with elite picks, top five picks, top six, seven picks. To... But they're not going to get that well, because and I, don't that's, think, that's why I don't think they'll that, finish low enough. That's why I think they don't have a lot going for them. But, they'll, but obviously the, it sounds like they've got um, a war chest to go mm. to, to market. Yeah, but there's not many of who's available at the moment so you can get from another club. I'm not sure there's that many. Hey, Where do they finish? Get, oh, ninth, 10th. Really? Yeah, I, I still think they're sixth, seventh. I didn't see the hype I didn't, around them in the preseason, but we'll wait and see. We'll find out. Jeremy Cameron, quickly, I'm getting the wind up. Yeah, I, I think we might agree on this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can Jeremy Cameron break the midfield dominance of the Brownlow? And oh, and can I'd he be the can he be the first player since Tony Lockett in 1987 to win the Coleman Brownlow double? <laughs> oh, I'd love to see it. Chris Scott uh, was talking about his role uh, um, after the game on the weekend. It's not about Chris Scott finding Jeremy Cameron how he can get the most touches and the most goals. He actually says how he can complement the strengths of the rest of our team. So. Hawkins wasn't there and they resist and they brought in young Neil and they resisted the urge to have to play, you know, Cameron deeper to mm. make up for Hawkins absence. They just allowed a young player to come into Hawkins role, allowed Jeremy Cameron to get up the ground and do what he does with Brad Close and with Grian Myers um, and Ollie Dempsey. And if he maintains and plays that role, the first, the first half of last year, he was, by Correct. far and away the best player in the competition. And then he got knocked out by his own player. And the back half of the year, he dropped off as Geelong dropped off. And he really just propped them up for the first half of the season last year. He's going from strength to strength. He's a he's a brilliant player to watch. And, and he just, I hope that we see an, the, a full season of this from Jeremy Cameron, and I and I would be amazed if he didn't win awards left, right, and centre mm-hmm. because of it. Question without notice: Cole Langford kicked a goal when he could have given a handball to Jake Stringer, and I saw another edit um, in the highlights from yesterday where Blitzavs was basically in the goal square and could have snapped it on his right, but just give a little handball to Jeremy Cameron to kick one. Did Langford miss an opportunity just to build team chemistry, <laughs> and and um, <laughs> it's about we. What do you reckon? No, <laughs> I just think you make certain of it, don't you? Like you, you may muck, miss the handball. You may muck Fair the point. handball up, Fair and point. you're in the goal square. Just kick it through. I, I didn't. I didn't have an issue with that. Do you remember? Do you remember when Geelong? I think it was with Stevie J. Yeah, with yep. Bomber, and they were actually having a contest on who can have the most assists. That's but it. but it was it was he and Matty Stokes, and it was nearly. It does. I'd prefer you to kick the goal than me kicking the goal, and they 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 were taking, yeah, you know, taking the piss pretty much by the end by just handing the ball over to their mm. teammates. But I I love that attitude going through the team. So you think he should have handled it? I think I think it just. I don't, I don't think there's. It's neither here nor there. And I agree with you about you could you could muck it up, but I just reckon when you see that, I, I think it's it's like a pay it forward type situation and I reckon it it's not just for the playing group it's actually for the supporters it's mm. I think it's just builds goodwill everywhere mm. and I and the, like it's neither here nor there but I think it's a, it was an opportunity missed nothing like Jake Stringer in a contract year just plays about 50% better when he's out of contract uh so so there you go so one on. year contracts 100% Sam Mitchell, I've been a big defender of his and the direction that Hawthorne are going. I lost a little bit of confidence with that performance, but also the demeanour of 
the coach. He's now coaching from the interchange bench. He's really animated where he's been a composed figure up behind the glass. And then those words after he, he just looked a bit rattled bucks. How concerned are you with where the Hawks are at off the back of that? Well, I think Gold Coast showed where they're at and, and yeah, the contrast was, was clearer to see. Um, and yeah, Gold Coast haven't been able to take those steps and they look like they might just, whereas Hawthorne are still building towards it. Uh, there, the honeymoon period ends at some point, and I reckon you know, we're getting there. So you might have an opinion about a coach, about um, the decisions that a club makes, about setting themselves up for success, but at some point it needs to transition from potential or mm. you get enough time. And the, coach, the coach's attitude will shift and change depending on the performance of the team and the individuals within it. So I'm not surprised. At some point you've got to – you publicly got to put the line in the sand and say, hey, our time has come. We should be doing better. We want to be doing better. We're not happy with where we're at. And so I, I think that was a natural evolution of, mm. of Hawthorne's journey. That, that's not to say that that they're going to get where everyone would like to get to. There's it's still a lot of work to be done. So I think the initial stages are easy. The intermediate stage is here to actually build yourself from a – from a bottom of the rung to, to a finals contender, they're, they're, t- they're hard yards to take mm. and there's no guarantees. They play North Melbourne this week. Yeah, well, let me see. Well, if you think that um, if you think that there's uh, pressure and expectation now or, or that there's question marks on mm. are, you get, are, you, are you going forward quickly enough? Harley Reid, what a performance. 27 kicked a goal. What a performance of the Masters. Scheffler has just birdied the 16th, is it? Do you follow? Do you follow Tim Gossage on Twitter? Um, he comes up with some great stuff. I had, right? uh, <laughs> <I had laughs> muted him. <laughs> Unbelievable! I've been thrown under the bus here. Unbelievable! He, he just came in. He's here for the means test, and he just came in. He said he did a chat with SENWA this morning. Uh, Tim Gossage, one of the one of I the said, genuine I said nice on, guys. I said on Friday, one of the good guys, as we were discussing how many accounts Kingy had blocked, and he's well into the thousands. So I said, "Will you just mute them?" Because then they don't know that you've blocked them. I said, look, you can mute people like Tim Gossage. I'm the king. <laughs> Which was a bit harsh. He I was, is a I was good a, fella. No, he's a ripper. And uh, he's, he's very good for uh, content, does a great job. Very versatile commentator and a great call of that Harley Reid uh, goal. So the career progression has probably come on a little bit quicker, do you think, Harley Reid? with where we thought he might be at this stage nah. of his career. Well, I thought it might take him some time with the, the fitness, playing in a poor side, finding his feet. Well, West Coast have come – like the last three weeks, West Coast have actually played some good footy. I thought I thought last week uh, their effort against the Swans was full of merit. So I, is he in line with your expectations with what he's delivering, below or above? With where uh, you in line. Okay, in he's, line. He's above where I thought but, he'd be. But, but there were – the expectations were through the roof. Yeah. So I think – I think his performance, if you looked at, you know, the back pages and the expect, is probably unders when you look at, when you look at what people were thinking. Like he had to, he had to be getting thirty five touches a game and have three three best on grounds like Matty Rowe did in his first mm, mm. three games to to have met that expectation. So he was never going to meet that. But I reckon he's he's shown really strong attributes in the contests. Yeah, his performance on the weekend was was stronger again. But that, that's, it's once again, it's the team is performing better. If it wasn't, it would be harder for him to shine the way that he's the way that he is at the moment. The thing that has impressed me the most has been his ability to handle the expectations. I said this last week. the 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 jumper pull was genius from him. It was genius because the discussion had been. Is he going to go home? How do we keep him? Is he Chris Judd? And he's just in one sort of jumper grab is just one over every, not that he needed winning over, but every West Coast supporter's got, how good's this? What about the, what about the passion? But then yesterday, Bucks, he, he speaks about Dustin Martin after the game and he lords Dustin Martin. Yeah. I just think the way that he's been able to handle it and carry himself under more pressure than any player's ever been under in their first five games of football that is also exciting. But can, we, can you can you accept that the, the, to say it's genius is to say that it's manufactured? No, I don't know if it was. But no, it, but it, that's but but just just put on that word. Like it just might be that we're actually now getting a glimpse of who Harley Reid yeah. is, not the footballer, but who he is. 
And when we get a glimpse of who he is, well, then then we actually, you know, the facade is removed about this about this Superman mm. footballer that he's been built up to be. And we just find out that he's a kid who loves pl- winning, who loves being a part of a team and who loves his opportunity to play AFL. And when, then he's humanized and we love that, don't we? Mm. Now you that, may, be, you may, yeah, you're, you're, you're probably right. We're just but, having a look. We just get I, to see him. I, he, there's a, just a nice, perfect level of arrogance and competitiveness as well. He's not afraid to get up in the face of the opposition, but not overt. I don't think it's been disrespectful. I think it's, just the way his demeanour is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So let's put I him really in, like. Let's put him against the Jason Horn Francis, who had a negative sentiment on him really early. Yeah. Now, he wasn't Jason Horn Francis didn't get comfortable until he got to, to mm. port, but even when he got to port, he he needed to deal with the expect or the, the criticism of being a mercenary about um, about changing clubs early. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the uh, narrative that was going around uh, about him, he, he needed to push through that. But surely we now see who he is underneath, and he's not a sport brat. He he needed to work through it. But Harley Reid's come in, maybe a little more looks a little more mature as at the same at the same age as Horn Francis. But you look at Horn Francis now, two years on, you think, well, he's developed beautifully. Mm, mm. And like they could be the same player in the next ten years, they'll go head to head, and we'll see some amazing contests between them because they've got Who would similar you take attributes. Right now? Well, Horn France is probably I'm seeing a little more burst out of, like a bit more speed, short speed out of the inside, whereas they're both really strong inside. But you, you, you just it does, in the end, the who would you take is you know is probably great fodder for a headline. Horn France is a better kick. Is that it was all I would say potentially, but you but. We, we you just we just don't have enough evidence okay. or exposure for Reed at this point, and we're still saying. And Horn Francis has changed significantly in twelve months, so we should we could see that with Reed as well. But I don't. You're not going to lose either way. No doubt. You?